Today's World Watch is sponsored by Summit Ministries. Experience a summer of growth, form lifelong friendships, and confidently engage culture. Good morning. It's Wednesday, February 23rd. Today we're bringing you not only our top news story, but also a sample of a full World Watch show. Enjoy. Take a second now to like and subscribe below. Now, here's top story. Russian troops moved into Ukraine early Tuesday morning in what could be the opening move of a full-scale invasion. In the frontline border town of Shastya, Russian bombshells shattered windows and drove residents underground. We have no connection, no light. We are in the basement with flashlights. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed decrees on Monday recognizing two regions in eastern Ukraine as independent territories. The Donbass and Luhansk regions are controlled by Russia-backed separatists. Putin called the troop movement a peacekeeping mission. In a lengthy speech, he also laid claim to all of Ukraine. Putin called it a country created by Russia and the Eastern Territory, ancient Russian lands. In the separatist controlled regions, some celebrated flying Russian flags and sounding horns. But Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky vowed he would not give up Ukrainian territory. And many Ukrainians sounded the same notes. If it is necessary to protect my country, if I can help, then I will protect my country. Of course we are afraid. It's okay. Everyone is afraid. But we decided to stay and defend our homeland. International leaders condemn the invasion, Britain hit Russia with sanctions, and Germany halted its Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline, which was slated to bring Russian gas to Europe. The United States has also threatened sanctions, and will have more as those actions develop. Italy's Mount Etna is back in action, spewing a cloud of smoke and ash seven miles high over the skies of Sicily. No injuries or fatalities have resulted from the eruption, but Etna is disrupting air traffic as it makes its presence known in the lower stratosphere. The lava flow centered around the crater on the mountain's southeast slope was stopped by Monday afternoon. Earlier in February, a similar eruption led to a dramatic display of lightning over the island of Sicily. The volcano has quite the history, swallowing the city of Catania in 1669 and threatening to do the same in 1983 before dynamite was used to divert the lava. A new labor deal in Belgium will give employees the right to choose to work four days a week. Instead of five eighths, they can choose four 10 hour days. A flexible schedule became important to many during the pandemic and a three day weekend doesn't sound too bad. Under the new agreement, employees will be free to ignore work calls and emails outside of work hours. The idea is to give people more freedom and also to give companies more freedom over how working hours are filled. Belgium isn't the first country to do this. About 85% of people in Iceland follow a four-day schedule and it's becoming a rising trend in the United States. Still, most office jobs in the U.S. are 9 to 5 times 5. We'll explain why that's the norm later in the show. Generation Z is finding a tough start in jobs. In December, about four out of 10 recent college grads were working in a position that did not require a college degree. During the pandemic, they've had a hard time making the professional connections needed to find openings that fit their interest and skill sets. In the meantime, they're taking lower wage jobs, but this could impact their long-term financial prospects. It'll likely take them longer to amass wealth. Bad for Gen Z, but also so bad for the long-term U.S. economy. Who fits into Gen Z? Can't keep your gen straight? We'll help you out after the break. Additional support comes from Heart of Dakota, providing easy-to-use literature-based homeschool curriculum with God's Word at the heart. Get a free catalog today. Humans like to group things together, whether it's items or people. It's a way to simplify our understanding of the world, to help inform us to make decisions and predictions. One way we categorize people is by generation. This refers to those born into and living at about the same period in time. These people live through the same events and social trends. 
and all about the same stage in life. So they often share characteristics, how they communicate, what motivates them, buying preferences, and so on. Sometimes the word generation is confused with age, but regardless of how old you are, you'll always belong to the generation you were born into. Today, there exist six generations. The silent generation, baby boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, which better known as millennials, Gen Z, and finally, Gen A. The middle four are part of the current workforce. We see that when walking through the world offices. Any baby boomers? Baby boomer, that's me. How about Gen Xers? That's me, here. Any Gen Y? I mean, millennials? That's me. Yep. I love coffee. Where are my Gen Zers? Each label acts as a shorthand to reference about two decades, where different attitudes, motivations, or historical events shape people in their formative years. For example, millennials like me were shaped by events such as the Great Recession, the explosion of technology from internet to social media, and 9-11. Each generation has events and innovations that impact how those people view the world and the choices they make. The government, organizations, and businesses can use this generational information to reach larger cross-sections of society, targeting forms of communication and convictions to inform and or persuade specific groups. But, of course, generational cohorts don't define you as an individual. God created you with a perfectly unique personality and skills. You're one of a kind. Businesses are moving away from the standard 40-hour workweek to give their employees more flexibility. But when the concept was first implemented, it was actually a way to reduce employees' workload. During the Industrial Revolution, factory workers were at it for 80 or even 100 hours a week. That's 12 to 14 hour days, six days a week. But with new machines to speed up production, workers were hoping they'd have more time for leisure activities. In 1866, the National Labor Union asked Congress to pass a law establishing an eight-hour workday. The law did not pass, but the effort did gain public support. And three years later, President Ulysses S. Grant issued a proclamation that gave government workers an eight-hour workday. But non-government workers were still fighting for shorter workdays. Labor organizers formed eight-hour leagues, which held rallies and protests, asking for better pay and lowered hours. And to promote their cause, they sang this song. Eight hours we'd have for working, eight hours we'd have for play, eight hours we'd have for sleeping in free America. In 1914, Henry Ford established an eight-hour workday in his factories, which were churning out Model Ts around the clock. The 24-hour day could be broken into three eight-hour work shifts. Ford also reduced the work week from six days to five. But because of the better working conditions, the company's productivity actually went up. Other companies soon followed Ford's example. During the Great Depression, there weren't enough jobs, so reducing a worker's hours was a way to create more jobs. And in 1938, the 40-hour work week became the rule when President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed a law from Congress called the Fair Labor Standards Act. Among other things, the law established eight-hour days and 40-hour weeks. And while that's been the standard for almost a century, today's work-from-anywhere technology could continue to drive some big changes in your future work life. You know how when there's a storm above, it's calm below? Well, that's how World Watch can be. Bad news at the top of the show, but here at the bottom, it's often calm. Today, calm with good news, because we have an update. Remember this, the unprecedented effort to feed Florida's starving manatees is working. 25 tons of lettuce into the program, more than 300 of the aquatic herbivores are showing up daily to dine on the donated romaine. Manatee deaths are way below average, and wildlife officials hope efforts to restore seagrass beds will mean an end to feeding the wild creatures. Let's find out what you know about manatees. Stay tuned. And thanks for watching, everybody. I'm the Big Bash. Remember, whatever the news, the purpose of the Lord will stand. We'll see you tomorrow. Here's a chance to earn extra credit quiz coins. Let us begin. A manatee has about the same percentage of body fat as which of the reporter Caleb Bailey, a polar bear, an elephant seal, a blue whale,
A manatee can survive in which water temperature? A manatee can hold its breath underwater for as long as World Watch? 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. A manatee can swim faster than a swordfish, a kayak, a sea turtle, Michael Phelps.